Hello, users of YouTube. Welcome to yet a new episode of Daniel's Videos and Etc. And boys, it's going to be very exciting. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a computer that was located in the garbage can. And here it is. This is a custom PC build that my brother found in the garbage can a couple days ago. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do a brief um, background on it. So basically, yes, a few days ago, uh, as of when I make this video, my brother was looking through uh, taking out the recycles. And in the recycling, he puts the recycle bag into the recycle can. And since we live in an apartment complex, the recycling bin is actually a dumpster. So, yeah. While he was in the recycling bin, he noticed this uh, um, uh, computer case in there. And, um, well, he runs back to our apartment and it comes in and tells me, Daniel, I, find a, I found a computer. He said it was a Razer computer. I guess I'm assuming he saw this logo first and he immediately thought it was a Razer. He said he found a Razer gaming computer in the recycling can. So he's like, ah, it's okay. We don't really care, blah, blah. And I insist and we end up going back out to get it. I examine it myself. My, my brother is not really a computer guy, so uh, I, he doesn't really know his way around what, what he sees. But um, came here and it's actually a custom PC build. And so, uh, well, I fished it out of the recycle and came back to my house, plopped it down on the floor, and uh, went to power it on. Um, after, of course, cleaning it out. But so there was so much dust inside the machine, I, I couldn't stand it. There was just lots. Dust, uh, we're talking about the size of the dust particles being like this big. It's pretty huge. So we get back to, um, so I ho after cleaning it out like a crap ton as much as I could, I went to go ahead and uh, power it up. And unfortunately, the computer would not post. Now, um, it, this machine did come with... Uh, a lot of stuff. It actually came with everything. It came with the hard drive. It was a 512 gigabyte uh, Barracuda Seagate hard drive. It also came with a uh, LG. Um, came with this LG uh, disk drive. Uh, the bait. This white one right here is mine. Um, so yeah, um, both of which are IDE only. So that's kind of stinks. Um, uh, the processor is an i7-860, um, which is actually very old. It's not even a first gen, so that's pretty old. I'm not joking. This is uh, this is about a 2010 era gaming machine. So that's about the parts. That's what I could find. All well, the parts came from that specific era. Um, it, it came with the RAM, um, two gigs, uh, four gigs. Um, of OCZ memory. I don't know exactly the specs for it, but it was gold, so that's interesting. Um, came with a stock Intel cooler, nothing water cooling special. Uh, came with a um, uh, an XFX Radeon HD 5850 graphics card. Um, we'll be taking a look at that in a moment. And yeah, that's pretty much what it came with. So back to the story. The computer did not post, and so um, I went ahead and tried to figure it out, and I. Usually the RAM is the culprit to reason why the motherboard wouldn't even turn on or post. Because, um, yeah, usually that's the culprit. So I pull out both sticks and I put one of them in. Computer still doesn't post. I pull out the uh, other gig stick. So there's two uh, four gig sticks. I'm sorry, there are two two gig sticks. One is a two gig stick and the other is a two gig stick. So, yeah. So I pull out the other one and I pop in the other two gig stick and it actually posts. The computer turns on. And it actually loaded Windows 7 uh, off the hard drive. It had Home Premium originally. Um, it loads it and it uh, goes up to the login screen. Um, like as if it was... Um, like nothing happened. Like it would just turned on like a normal person. So basically, I got it working. And it was because of the RAM. So... I saw potential in this build, and so did my brother. So my brother, um, he games, and he's a much better, uh, much more into gaming than me. Um, I do game, but I don't game as much as he does. So this would have been a very. Uh, he said he he called dibs on the computer, so I'll let him have it. I mean, I got floater two eighty eight sitting right there. Awesome computer. Um, they're both. I think this one's a little bit better toward the graphics card side of things, but I think processor-wise, they're both about the same. Um, so yeah. So now this thing's running on two gigs, um, and it works pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open the top here. 
So after um, investigating the RAM issue, I went ahead and started cleaning out the computer. I started cleaning off the dust off the card, the power supply, hard drive, dust everywhere. I was trying to, the dust I couldn't get with my hurricane, so I started cleaning everything off individually with alcohol, um, a Q tip, and whatever. So eventually I get it cleaned off, and then I get to the point where I'm installing, um, I actually install, uh, uh, um, do a low level format on the hard drive. So now it's completely empty, and I install Windows 7 Home Premium. With the um, this thing actually did come with the Windows key, so that was pretty neat. So yep, this computer is now up to date. Everything's good, and it runs awesome. I mean, um, it runs Half-Life 2 at max res, and uh, that's pretty good. No bottlenecking. Um, runs Goat Simulator at a pretty high settings, which is pretty good. Not high, high, but like high, not very high, but it's pretty good. Not ultra. So um, here's the OCZ RAM I was telling you guys about, and the other stick is on my bed. Let's see if we can get close up on that. So yeah, again, like I said, uh, came with two of these guys. This one's dead, so yeah. Um, maybe I'll, my, I'm gonna give this to my brother. He likes the way it looks because it's just gold, and um, I'm, and I'm gonna keep the live one. Now I bet you're wondering why I'm keeping, but we're both keeping the RAMs even though this thing works. Well, me and my brother, again, we saw potential in this build, so we're gonna nurture nurture this computer back to a, a gaming fit form. We're gonna upgrade the crap out of this thing. So I'm gonna tell you guys about that in a moment. But anyway, so there's one gig, it was only two gigs in this machine right now, so that's all right. Um, um, there's the Intel stock cooler. Now, the problem, there's actually a problem with this. This thi uh, The pins on the stock cooler, these little push things are broken. So it's not holding the cooler in um, enough. So basically, if you had this thing standing up vertically, it would completely fall out. This thing would fall out. So that's why I have this on its side. Um, now, uh, the reason why I have this fan out here like this is because I'm actually going to be removing it. And um, and I'm going to be putting this into the uh, computer on uh, my, my computer because uh, the intake on that one only spins at 500 RPM. And this one spins at 900 RPM or no wait 700 it's one of those either 700 or 900 it spins a lot faster and it pulls in a lot more air so right now that that computer has negative airflow negative air pressure airflow running now this one has positive once I remove this in, um, uh, exhaust fan so once it's all removed this will exist this is the intake this is one actually pretty neat it has a color LED lights on the intake and it can be switched on with this switch right here so that's pretty neat and it's red um, and we also have an exhaust 120, uh, it's a one, uh, 140 sized uh, exhaust, so that's pretty good. Both of them work, uh, no need to replace them yet. But if I had to replace them in the future, for whatever reason, I'm gonna get an Aero Cool uh, dead silent fan. Uh, I've been using those in my PC build, so that's working pretty good, so. Yep, but for now, I'm keeping the fan that's already in here, and I'm taking this intake. Anyway, back to uh, the computer. I'm uh, going to go over the specs. Like I said, there's the Seagate hard drive, um, two uh, disk drives. There's mine on the top, and the one on the bottom here is um, an LG uh, DVD drive. Using Both of them are using IDE and a simple um, four-pin Molex connector for power. Um, here's the power supply. It's a Corsair HX750 watt uh, power supply. It is modular, and... Um, it did come with uh, all of the cables that were hooked up already, so it only came with the uh, um, anything that was in this machine originally that had uh, needed power had the cables in there already. So this guy didn't even remove the hard drive at all, nor did he remove the processor. So it was kind of stupid. But I'm assuming he threw this out because of the ra one of the RAM sticks were bad. It would make sense, but uh, I think it's sad that he threw out the whole thing instead of taking the hard drive out. He didn't even wipe it, so that's pretty stupid of him. Um, there's the uh, uh, 12 volt rail, ATX, EATX 12 volt, and um, it says a ASUS P7P55D-E using an, uh, um, the LGA 1156 socket. Um, like I said, there's an i7-860 under here, so, uh, yep. Um, it has, um, it's mainly supported for US um, 3 um, uh, SATA 2 support, but it has a microcontroller. It has a controller for SATA 6. Um, there it is right there. I think it's a Maxwell controller. I don't exactly remember, but it says you can see 6G. Uh, this is actually considered a gaming motherboard for its time because of the uh, amount of stuff that goes into it. So we have a memory check thing, so you push that down to see if the memory passes. 
I'm good. Got a clock calendar. Clock was working, but I put an Energizer battery instead of the Newman batteries that come with the Asus motherboards and typical motherboards alike. Um, so this motherboard was actually made in a time before US when USB 3 came out, but there was no official header for it yet. So there is no USB 3 header on this motherboard at all, just USB 2. And but there is a USB 3 header on the back of the motherboard. So there it is right there, and there's only two of them. So um, back then, most cases that had USB 3 actually were just a cable, USB 3 cable that went directly to the back. It would go through the back of these holes and plug in. So that was very jury, uh, but how you doing? But yeah. We also have a COM port. I uh, was going to use it, but the cables that I need to get for it are very short. So, oh well, we'll see. Um, we got um, We got one. Uh, two and three um, PCI Express times one slots, one, two, two uh, PCI slots, um, and one, two PCI um, X times 16 slots. PCIe times X times 16 slots, yeah. So it's got a uh, pretty feature packed um, for its age. Uh, there's only one hard drive in here, so one of the SATA slots are occupied. And this thing does have front port eSATA, so that's why the other one's taken. Uh, I might route that, uh, well actually this is actually a dedicated port on the motherboard for eSATA. So I'm, I was thinking of putting it, plugging it right here, but uh, since it's a dedicated, I'm just going to keep it. Um, so uh, the uh, Corsair power supply uses a gold standard, so that's pretty neat. So here's the nice card that we got here. This is a, spin the camera around here. Um, this is a, I can't see the camera very well. So yeah, it's an XFX HD Radeon um, 5850. Um, I tried looking this card specifically up in the internet and I couldn't find anything except for the 5860 and the 5850 but in an alternate case style. It is a 500 watt power supply, or at least that's what it needs, and it requires, it does require the external use of this power supply cable. Mine does not, but it is also a 500 watt graphics card. Um, if I said power supply, I meant graphics card. <laughs> so, yep, uh, does have an IDE connection, uses an ASUS branded IDE cable, and yep, pretty nice case. Oh, by the way, the case is a Cooler Master half. 922 that's good um, uh, there is a dust filter but it's very inaccessibly hard to get to and it requires you to remove three screws here and three screws on the other side to get to it so I'm gonna be removing that and putting in a nice Demacy Flex uh, fan filters same of which that I use on my computer except the uh, are designed for this case so that's pretty neat and there will also be a fan fil filter for the uh, bottom power supply hole so there's a fan down there, so there's going to be a fan filter for it. Also a Demacy Flex. So any of the Demacy Flex filters I've ordered are going to be specifically designed for this uh, case. So that's pretty neat. So yeah, right here we got a uh, generic, um, I think this is an Inland brand um, uh, USB 2.0 um, card. Uh, this was actually originally belonged to Floater 72. I think that uses an NEC chipset. But anyway, it originally belonged to Floater 72 belong to Floater 72 and so since Floater 72 does not exist anymore um, it is currently in this computer and it does work so that's pretty good um, eventually we're gonna get a Wi-Fi card because there's no onboard Wi-Fi um, and it's gonna go down there it is gonna be um, um, I did a video on it except this is a new revision um, of the Intel um, AC7260 revision 1 uh, internet card. I have the original one, not the revision one, so uh, yep, that's pretty interesting. So yeah, um, we're going to keep that USB 2.0 card in there. Uh, oh, by the way, that Intel card also does have, um, that Wi-Fi card also does have Bluetooth as well, so that's pretty awesome. Um, now we're not going to be using this other time 16 slot, but that's all right. Um, we're also going to be getting a uh, Sound Blaster Audigy card, uh, RX something like that, uh, 7.1 surround sound. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, that'll be going to, I guess, maybe the other PCI X times 16. I'm sorry, PCI. It'll probably go up here. Um, so that's good. Keeping the CPU here. We're going to be upgrading the cooler with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. 
I actually have that on my bed right here. It is um, a little bit different than the one I had. Mine actually came in a purple box and it was slightly thicker. But there is the new Hyper 212 Evo. And it's going to be installed into this. And um, I don't know, I haven't measured the uh, cooler yet. I don't know if it'll fit completely into the case. And I think it might. Probably will. But uh, yeah. I will ha I am still thinking about it, but I'm planning to mount the cooler like this. The fan uh, blowing air in this way. So instead, um, I was thinking about... Uh, the fan pulling air in from here, having it mounted like that, air coming in like that, but the CPU will block the airflow and it might choke it. Um, not that it will or anything, so I was going to mount it like that, like I did in my PC build, with air going into the power supply. But we'll see. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much the idea. I think that's about it. Yeah. That's all the parts. So, again, the DMC Flex fill and filters will be another one that'll be coming soon. This is not going to be an official video. Um, as you may have seen my Corsair Vengeance RAM. Oh, yeah, 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 the RAM. I'm going to be, so I already have it here. This is a uh, Corsair Vengeance uh, 4 times 4 gig, 16 gig uh, um, um, uh, RAM kit. So, it's Corsair brand, it's Vengeance. Yeah, it's pretty neat, it's uh, awesome. I tested it out with the computer already, it works, although um, had an issue at first, uh, I was only getting 8 gigs on the motherboard, but after rearranging the RAM, uh, resetting the clock calendar, um, and getting it started again, it recognized the full 16 gigs and it booted into Windows normally. Um, just so you know, when you encounter this problem, and I did actually, and I actually looked on the website and many others encountered this. Check step one, rearrange the RAM, and step two, make sure it's pushed in all the way. Because when I rearranged it, um, I noticed I actually didn't push it in all the way. So I, after pushing the cart, um, SD or the uh, RAM modules in, it started working perfectly. And that is awesome. 16 gigs of RAM, awesome. Cooler Master um, case and a Cooler Master cooler, awesome. Wi Fi, AC um, 7260, Intel, awesome. Sound Blaster Creative Labs card, awesome. I was thinking about getting a new hard drive to a one terabyte because this hard drive is about five, four years old, five years old. Uh, my dad says recommended hard drive life's five years old, but this one's still purring along. There's no surface errors, so that's very good. Um, yeah, so yeah. Also included on the uh, front array panel, like I said, there's an eSATA port. USB 2.0 port, headphone, microphone, and a USB 2.0 port again. Um, as for the top though, there's a fan switch power LED like I said. Turns the uh, red LED on on the intake. Power switch, right clunky, and a reset button. And a hard drive indicator, or power indicator and hard drive indicator. So that's pretty good. Yep. So yeah. Um, the Razer stickers, I don't know what came with it that required Razer. When this computer, when the, I did get this computer and got it working, I found out that there was a Logitech CD for headphones in the computer drive. That was kind of interesting. But so it was obviously the previous owner was a gamer. But there are Razer stickers on both sides of the case. Um, I'm assuming they had a peripheral that was Razer branded, so that yeah, probably was it. Um, but for now, that is the computer case. And that is today's video, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of Daniel's Videos and Etc. Pretty neat build. This is going to be known as Project uh, Floater 576. You have Floater 72 running on a Pentium 3. Then you had Floater 144 running on a Pentium 4. Then Floater 288 running on an AMD 64 Athlon 2. 2X. X2. Um, 250 processor. Um, and now you have Project Floater 576 running on an Intel um, 860 4 core. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now, this is going to be a pretty cool build. So, uh, yeah, me and my brother are going to be building it. Um, haven't built PC the PC build really since last summer, August. And this will be a new summer project, I guess. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Like, dislike, favorite, comment, subscribe if you'd like. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, you're going to be seeing a familiar face in the next one. So, all right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.